Hello, this video is a continuation of the previous video in which I introduced the transformation matrices. In this second part of the presentation I will focus on the basic transformation operations and their composition. Therefore, the aims of the presentation are on the one hand to understand the basic transformation operations such as translation and rotation in each of the axes of a reference frame. Then we will focus on composition of transformation operations which can be done with respect to the fixed frame or in, uh, in the, that's the one that doesn't change the orientation or the mobile reference frame that's the one that changes as we apply transformations. Finally, we will analyze the importance of understanding the difference between pre-multiplications and post-multiplications operations of homogeneous transformation matrices. We will start by describing the basic transformation matrix of a translation operation. As it can be seen, it is a homogeneous matrix with the last column with the coordinates of the translation vector t. In the case of a rotation around x, then we have that the homogeneous transformation matrix is composed on the one hand of a 3 times 3 submatrix corresponding to the rotation matrix around x, and in the other hand we have the translation component of the homogeneous matrix which is just simply a vector with zeros. Please note that in each of the rotations operations the column and row related with the corresponding rotation is filled with zeros but the pivoting element contains the one. Similarly, we can obtain the basic transformation matrix with respect to a rotation around y axis. And in the same way, we would do the, uh, we would uh, we can obtain the same uh, transform, uh, transformation matrices, a uh, transformation matrix around uh, with respect to a rotation around z. The fact is that these four basic transformations are the basis of composing any transformation matrix in the three D space. As we saw in the previous presentation, a general transformation we will actually compose of a three times three sub matrix corresponding to the rotation matrix and a 3 times 1 translation vector as a result of applying any rotation or translation operation. To compose a sequence of transformation, we can perform this by just simply uh, performing successive multiplications in both the OXYZ fixed frame and the OUVW the mobile frame. However, it is very important to consider that matrix multiplication does not satisfy the commutative property and therefore the order of transformations it is very important. In the case of performing a transformation with respect to the fixed frame, we must apply a pre-multiplication, which means that to the current transformation matrix we must pre-multiply a basic transformation matrix. On the other hand, if, we, uh, if the transformation is performed with respect to the mobile reference frame, then the resulting transformation matrix is the result of multiplying the current transformation matrix and post multiply it with the basic transformation matrix. Now we will study the case of performing a pre-multiplication and specifically if we have a reference frame that it's generally defined with a homogeneous transformation matrix T0 here and on the other hand we intend to apply a transformation matrix T1 a general transformation matrix, in this case with respect to uh, the fixed frame, then we must perform the pre-multiplication operation. And as you can see, the resulting operation submatrix is nothing more than the multiplication of, or in proper order, of rotation submatrices. However, the new translation term will depend on T1 transformation to be performed as a result of transforming T1 to the homogeneous point T01. As you can see. Also, keep in mind that if we only apply a, transla a translation or a rotation, obviously these expressions can be simplified, as you can see here. Similarly, but just in the opposite way, we can obtain the generic expressions as a result of applying a post multiplication. In this case, we can again observe that result the resulting uh, rotation submatrix is nothing more than the, um, the rot multiplication of rotation matrices in the proper order, obviously. While the new translation term will depend on the transformation T0 as a result of multiplying T0 with the homogeneous point T11. This is different from the previous case. 
Again, these expressions can be simplified if we only apply the translation or rotation operation. And obviously, these expressions uh, can be simplified as you can see here. To finish with uh, this presentation, we will see some, of, uh, some examples that will allow you to visualize the implications of different translations and rotation operations. In the first example, we see the result of applying a translation with respect to x. As a result, we obtain the reference frame O prima U prima V prima W prima. On the other hand, if the translation is made with respect to the U axis, that's uh, the actually is the x axis of the mobile reference frame, we obtain a different translation. In this case, we must perform a post multiplication translation. Similarly, if we apply the rot a rotation uh, around x with respect to the fixed frame, we observe that the mobile, uh, the mobile frame moves uh, and also rotates, because the origins O and O prima, they are not coincident. The new origin will be located in O prima prima. And if, on the contrary, we perform a rotation with respect to the mobile reference frame, the origin will not be modified, the new origin will not be modified. The orientation, in any case, is different from the one we have obtained before, because, in this case, the x-axis, the fixed, uh, or the, the x-axis of the fixed frame, and the u-axis, the, the x-axis of the mobile frame, they are not pointing to the same direction. Furthermore, transformation matrices will allow us to express transformations, that is, the translation and rotation between any two reference frames. The notation that we will follow to express this transformation between reference frame is the one shown here, being O2, the frame we want to express with respect to O1, with O2 in the subscript and O1 in the super index. The inverse relation of a transformation matrix will allow us to express this transformation but with respect to the reference frames change. In the, that is the transformation of O1 with respect to O2. As you can see, the inverse of a transformation matrix, is, matrix implies that the term uh, or the, the relative term with, uh, corresponding to the rotation is a simply transpose, and the term corresponding to the translation is indeed the multiplication of the, rota the transpose tr uh, rotation and uh, the translation vector with this sign change. As you can see, we do not need to remember how to inverse 4 times 4 matrices, we just simply need to remember how to perform a transposition and a matrix vector multiplication using this formula here. These relations or, uh, between the reference frames will allow us to construct transformation graphs, in which we can find out the transformation with respect to any reference frame that typically appears in a robotic system. For example, there is a transformation T, W, R between the world frame and the robot frame. Likewise, we can also get a transformation matrix between the robot frame and the end effector. This is noted as T, R, E. And, of course, we, between the end effector and tool frame. T, E, T transformation in this case. On the other hand, we can also, or we, we can know um, the transformation of an object with respect to the world and the transformation of the tool uh, to the object. In this case, uh, T, O, T. We might be interested, let's say, in this last transformation, T, O, T, let's say, uh, to find out how far or close the tool is with respect to the object. We also might be interested in knowing the position of the end effector with respect to the robot base, so that we can, let's say, grip the object, which implies that the tool will be, uh, in this case, uh, in a known position with respect to the object, or a proper gripping, in this case. As you can see, all these transformations are easily expressed by multiplying the transformation matrices in the proper order as shown in the transformation graph. 
By applying basic algebra, we can try to find out the value of one of these transformation matrices if the rest of transformations are known. During this process, we might need to compute the inverse of some transformation matrices, but as we have shown before, this is a, let's say, rather quite straightforward operation. In this video, I have explained some of the concepts related with the transformation matrices, specifically those related with basic transformation matrices and their composition. Thank you very much.